Hey, what's up guys? It's Chris Lee and you are now watching United Destiny Entertainment Tutorials Online. Hey, what's up guys? Chris Lee back with another United Destiny Entertainment Tutorial. Check this out. This is actually video segment part five in this video. And basically what I'm going to be showing you guys with this video is just how I apply some reverb, uh, maybe some uh, flangers or maybe some auto-tune or, you know, just different type of effects like that. I'm also going to try to tackle delays in this video. If not, you will be sure to catch it in the next video segment. But uh, I've been trying to keep these videos short, but sometimes I get into the process of really trying to explain things to you guys. And I kind of run over time a little bit and kind of run out of time to explain what I wanted to explain uh, in this particular video. But you can always catch it in a video after. Also, make sure that you check out all the videos before this. Uh, it's going to teach you everything about uh eqing and it's going to teach you things about compressors and pan and vocals and naming your vocals and how to clean your vocals up so make sure that you watch the first video and every video after that because it's going to teach you the step-by-step -step process of how you need to actually start affecting or tackling vocals when you want to get a good mix okay so let's jump right into this one now for this one in particular i want to go ahead and listen to the other background vocals that i did uh with it because i might have to do some tune into it or I might not. It just depends on how I feel. She a bad girl. She a bad girl. She gon' make a nigga want it. Let me see you twerk it. I'm about to push up on it. She a bad girl. She a bad girl. She a bad girl. Okay, so I like that. Now, uh, before I go ahead and tackle that, I just want to listen to the verse really quick. She a boss baby, she a bad bitch. Mad bitch. Green eyes, shawty mad thick. Mad she said she want a nigga mad rich. She got a mean curve like a bad bitch. Look, girl, you looking so good on it. Good uh, on it. You gonna make a nigga get hood on it. Let's go. Okay, so I, I mean, I love, I love the verse. I love the way the verse sounds, and that's just with some simple EQ and compression right now. What I did with the hook <clears throat> is pretty much the same way that I tackled the verse and there was no need for me to go in and show you all this extra stuff that I've been doing to all the vocals because it's the same process. I would just be wasting time. So now what I want to do is kind of go to the, um, my background vocals. So I'm just going to mute the first vocals and play that hook. Girl, make the nigga want it. All right. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to use something called a meta plugin. It's a third party host plugin that basically allows me to use all my ways plugins or VSTs that I had uh, previously before that I can use in other Adobe auditions or other Pro Tools or Cubases or whatever. And it allows me to use those plugins inside of Adobe audition. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and focus on that right now. So I'm going to go down to VST and DDMF. And meta plugin now if you want to know more about this uh, particular plugin then I'm thinking maybe that I can just put the link in the description box you will have to pay for it but it's a great software it allows me even to use ways plugins inside of Pro Tools 12 because I don't want to go out and buy new ones perfect way to continue to do mixing for clients all right so I'm going to go ahead and delete this filter because that was a previous filter that I used for another session but I'm going to go in and add auto-tune. And once I add auto-tune, by the way, with this meta plugin, you have to use it in connection with a plugin called JBridge, okay? JBridge, it'll basically convert your plugins into a particular uh, VST that this plugin can read so you can be able to utilize it. Now, I just did like some patching here. The only way that I can hear the effect from this plugin is to actually connect it, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and mute. I probably don't even have to, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and mute one vocal and just focus on this one. I'm going to try to get this thing tuned. So what you want to do is figure out the scale, okay? Whether it's going to be major or minor, that usually works well for auto-tune. And then you want to figure out the key of the song, okay? If you don't know it right off the top of your head, then go through your different keys and see what your options are. You don't have many, 
Okay. So I'm gonna go with a minor. So if you notice, you hear the auto tune, but it isn't quite right. So you want to keep going. Aha, so there we go. <clears throat> the key of G and minor scale, uh, it just happens to be uh, the right tuning for this particular vocal. All right, even though the vocal it wasn't bad from the get-go, I just wanted to tune it a little bit to give it that uh, T-Pain-ish, auto-tune-ish effect to kind of go with the hook. I turned the re retune speed down. Basically, the more retune speed that you have, the lower the number, the more auto-tune-ish it sounds. Check it out. Okay, so even though I like that, that's not what I'm going for in this track, so I'm just going to back it up a little bit. Humanize is exactly what it says. It's going to humanize the vocal and as well as the natural vibrato. Uh, it's going to control how much vibrato uh, the auto-tune software adds to your vocals. Now, a lot of us already have uh, vibrato. So if you're somebody like Trey Songs or whatever, then you want to cut back and minimize on this vibrato. Now, you have a lot of talented artists in the music industry right now. Even though they all still use auto-tune, they don't need it, but it just gives that nice uh, uh authentic creative sound to their vocals and this is basically what they use or melodyne or whatever software so now that i got what i like with that particular vocal i'm gonna go ahead and save it and remember that i was in a g minor so i'm gonna go ahead and apply that same effect once again and i can do a copy and paste thing uh right now but I, i'm not trying to do that just because this meta plugin uh, depending on the operating system and what you're actually using, sometimes it has a few bugs to where it can just kind of close the software or, or make the software fail. So I don't like to be lazy in the process. I just want to go ahead and and add it manually. And pr if I'm in Pro Tools, I'll go ahead and do it um, copy and paste. But in this situation, that's not what I want to do. Okay, so I'm going to leave this. This just happens to work out just fine. And now let's listen to it. She a bad girl, bad girl, make a nigga want it. Pop the push up on it, she a bad girl. Now look at this. Now there's one. There's one for this G major because there's something that's just a tad bit weird there. Okay, so let's go ahead and listen to this one again. Okay, so, I mean, it's not sounding weird by itself, but for some odd reason, when I was playing it with this other one, in which I want to double check, uh, it started to sound a little bit weird. Okay, now let, let's hear it with the hook. She a bad girl, she a bad girl, she gonna make a nigga want it. Okay, I'm liking it. It's sounding good. Um, I thought I heard something weird and I could just be tripping, but yeah, I'm liking it. I'm, I'm loving the way it sounds right now. Okay, so I'm at, I'm at nine minutes right now. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to apply 
just a, a reverb, okay? So I'm going to go to that particular vocal, and you want to go right here to your sins. Your sins are going to allow you to send your effect, uh, your vocals to an uh, auxiliary track, track with particular effects such as, you know, reverb, delays, or whatever, and you are going to be able to control how much of that effect is going to be applied to your vocals. So I'm going to send it to, to B, Buzz B. If you don't have a bust already, just go add bust and add stereo. But I already have Buzz B ready to go, and that's pretty much what I'm going to do right now. So I got Buzz B, and I'm going to go down to Buzz B, the auxiliary track down here. And let's go ahead and change those colors. I'm going to go ahead and change them to a green so I know that they're my auxiliary tracks. And I can actually keep track. And I'm going to double click this and just name it verb. Once I name it verb, I want to go up here <clears throat> and pick a reverb. And let's just go with uh, let's go with studio reverb. OK, um, there's a lot that I can talk about with with reverb. Now, basically, long story short, you're going to have uh, room size decays, uh, how long that reverb is going to, you know, last or go past the vocals or keep going how wide it is the frequency cut and a low frequency cut is just going to de be determined on what do you want the reverb to affect do you only want it to affect uh between frequency range 500 hertz and 1k if so then you would set the high frequencies and the low frequency hertz to have the reverb cut at those frequencies. So here the reverb will cut at 880. And this one here, it will cut at about 13,000 uh, kilohertz. That means that anything over 13,000 kilohertz, there won't be any reverb on it. It won't be affecting the vocals. Dampen, diffusion, uh, dry, wet. This is your dry vocal. This is how much of the wet reverb actually goes to it. Like I said, I can explain that in another video deeper into detail. But for right now, I just want to show you guys how it actually works. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to this bad reverb um, just because this is one that I had set up for this session. All right. So once I go to that reverb, it's set up on that particular track. Then I'm going to go to my actual vocal and that has the verb. And here is where your sin is going to be set. So listen to the, let's go ahead and mute everything else. And listen to that vocal. She a bad girl. She a bad girl. This is dry. Now, as you begin to increase this, then you'll begin to increase the reverb. Now, let's just change this to zero. Check this out. Go on it. Let me see you twerk it. I'm about to push up on it. You notice that the reverb is there. Now, let's just exaggerate it. She a bad girl. She a bad girl. Now, if you notice, the S sounds came out with that reverb. So, number one, you don't want to have that much reverb. No way. You just want to find a sweet spot. At the same time of finding your sweet spot, you want to make sure that when you go into your reverb, like how I heard the, the S sounds being enhanced with the reverb, you don't want that. So basically, if I go into the frequency cut and I go into a particular point and say I'll just make this 2,500, then like I said, basically anything over 2,500, the reverb is not going to affect that vocal range, okay? So that's that's what I want to do here. She a bad girl. She going to make a nigga want it. Let me see you twerk it. I'm about to push up on it. She a bad girl. Now notice you can hear the reverb. She a bad girl, she a bad girl, she gonna make a nigga want it, let me see you twerk it, I'm... Okay, so by, by itself, that may sound good, but with the beat, it doesn't sound good, okay? So I'm gonna stick with negative 10, and I'm just gonna do that for the rest of them. Now, when you do that, also here, notice, notice exactly what this is. This is the stereo balance. Now, in Pro Tools, you have like a follow main panner effect. You want to do the same thing inside of um, Adobe Audition. You want to make sure that whatever vocal effects you apply to your vocals, that they follow the main effects. So uh, your main panner. So my main panner for this particular track was negative 50 to the left. So I want to make sure that this is going to be negative 50 to the left as well. And it's going to be the same concept with this one here. And I'm just going to go in, I'm going to right click, I'm going to add that verb, letting me know that I just added my reverb, and I'm going to type in negative 10, 
and I'm going to type in 50 here for the reverb so I can pan it to the right. Now, I'm just going to go in and do that for the rest of them just because I know what I want. So I want to go in and add the reverb for both of those particular tracks. And then I want to go ahead and go with the negative 10. Sometimes with your ad libs or your, your stacks or your harmonies, the reverb may be a little different. You want to go ahead and make it a little different to go ahead and create some space. So for me, I'm going to go with I'm going to go with probably negative 12. Just because I want less reverb <clears throat> on those particular vocals. And the same thing here. It's 75 to the left, so I'm going to go negative 75. And then I'm going to go positive 75 to the right side. All right. That's way so my effects follow the main pattern. All right. Check it out. My papa push up on it. She a bad girl. She a bad girl. Now, remember what I told you guys before earlier in all the previous video sections. It's important for you to balance your vocals without effects first, because if you have everything too loud, once you start adding compressors, EQs and reverbs, all it's going to do is add to the frequency. It's going to add to the dynamic range. It's going to make it louder. So I'm creating space. I created space for myself and gave myself headroom and room to play with for me to add EQs, compressors, reverbs, and all these different effects because now I'm getting close to the clipping again. Now I can go back and balance my vocals and turn them down, but my vocals now are more punchy up front. Uh, the clarity is there. It's have some reverb on it. Uh, my vocals are starting to do more inside of the mix. They're not sounding so flat. She a bad girl. She gonna make a nigga want it. Let me see you twerk it. I'm about to push up on it. And there you have it, guys. Stay tuned for the next video. For the next video, I'm going to just show you guys how I uh, implement some delays and different type effects to the vocals. And then we're going to start tackling the verse a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys, you know, just how you can get an overall good mix. I hope that these videos is helping you out. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you check out all the other videos that I've done to this video series. Do not skip one. It's key information in there. And make sure you stay tuned for the next segment. Thanks for watching.